show and the Strictly Business podcast. So today I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, Shani uh, owns the website <clears throat> saveitwithabox.com.au and she is currently uh, working with um, people who are, who've contracted the coronavirus. So she's also a nurse, so she's actually not having a whole lot of time to work on her business right now. And because she's obviously out actually helping other people, I thought I would help her in the only area I really I know how to help people, and that's SEO and digital marketing. So what you're looking at right now is this with a box.com.au domain, and I just wanted to do some research. And while I'm doing that research, I actually just wanted to film it. So this video is really you know directed at um, Shani, and but I'm hoping that other people who are watching this may also get some value out of it. Uh, you know, we all need some SEO help from time to time. Now, right now, uh, the thing that really sticks out to me by my first impression looking at the website is the sort of the navigation. So like, it's very sort of hard to um, read the top navigation menu items. And then this thing behind is just flickering so fast that it's sort of difficult to, to, to really um, know what's really happening. So it's a little bit disorientating. And as you really scroll to the bottom, this is not a, a bad section, but again, shop corporate, again, is on a really difficult background. It's very hard to, to sort of read um, and know what's going on. These two are not too bad. And then you sort of scroll down, and you get a bit of content with these little uh, uh, logos and images which I'm not sure are oh, there some of her clients wouldn't have any idea so the first thing that I've done is I've actually crawled the website using a tool called screaming frog most SEOs will know what this is and basically it just crawls the website looking for problems reporting back information and data that we then you know inform and recommend to clients to improve obviously this sort of you know replicates what the Google search engine would be actually doing when it crawls its website but we're doing it in lifetime. Can be difficult if you've got millions and millions of web pages. But Shani doesn't have millions of web pages, so it's not that difficult at all. And there's one broken 404 error. Now Google hates 404 errors. They what a 404 error actually is is a page that's not found. So you've got a link to a page that doesn't exist, and Google absolutely hates those sorts of things because it provides a negative user experience. And so I won't worry about this right now. I'll just flip that over to the side. So what that link actually is, if you scroll right down to the bottom, it's this little privacy link right here. And when you click on that, you get a 404 error. Of course you do. It's a page not found. So what's happening is because Shani is currently linking to that privacy policy uh, on every single web page, Google actually hits the website and when it crawls every single page, every single page theoretically has a link to a 404 page. All she has to do is either remove that URL or update the URL so it matches something at the top here. You know, maybe, I don't know what the real URL might be, but she's obviously just referencing it wrong. What I also would recommend is, let's actually see whether this page is indexed first before I recommend that. So we go to Google Home, type in. Sorry, so I've got my microphone right in front of the keyboard. Not a good idea, Mr. Glensos. Okay, so this page is not even really indexed anyway, but what you can do is just update that URL or remove the link. I would I would probably have a privacy policy, makes sense. You're an e-commerce store, so I would definitely have that. Um, just update the URL and, and or um, just build that page. My recommendation would be to leave it as pages slash privacy dash statement and actually just make sure that page does not 404 and actually um, displays your privacy policy. Privacy policy is also a relatively um, small Google search engine ranking factor and especially now with the whole privacy uh, issue that's, that's sort of been you know, plaguing the internet, um, it's a really good idea to actually have one anyway. So moving right along, the website designed by Creative Order. Now, I'm not necessarily one that likes to recommend people to remove links to other websites, but links across footers is actually a negative SEO factor. Um, 
obviously if you if you had a good experience with website design creative order maybe you would want a link to a page set I actually have a page where it says you know my design or a link it somewhere down the bottom and that page links to an internal page which then talks about them and then you can link to them from a single page but when you link to them continuously from the footer it's just not providing um, it's not giving you the best possible SEO experience now we only do that with one or two sites I think because we love the website so much but I'm actually going, going to actually remove that myself because I don't think it's right. So what I'm going to actually do with a particular client is build an actual web page that says Omega Digital built the website and then that can then link out to me. But linking directly through the footer is something that is not recommended and it's really not good for them and it's really not good for you, um, you as in saving the box. Also, I would update your copyright in 2020. And let's just check to see, make sure that all your social media profiles work no they don't so you also have a let's go back let me scroll down if i click on it's a very long page too by the way if i click on facebook it goes back to the website so the facebook link needs to be updated i click on twitter same thing i click on instagram instagram works fantastic <laughs> And I click on Google Plus. I don't know why that's even there anymore. I would remove Google Plus and I'll probably have a YouTube channel and I'll start showcasing all of your videos. Um, and really, everything you sort of, you do a hamper, record it, do a one minute clip, put it on Instagram, do a YouTube video, every single hamper that you could possibly create. And I'll get into other blog content shortly where you can integrate and embed YouTube videos into that blog content. But moving right along. So let's have a look at your FAQ page. Cool. Okay, so what I would recommend here is I don't actually see any frequently asked questions. I just see the whole block of text. Uh, this is a little bit difficult to do, but if you go to Google and you type in SEO, I think the package is Sydney. What we've done for our sort of um, you can see sort of what we've done. We actually have our FAQs drop down into our search results. This is actually, in all fairness, is going to be a bit too difficult for uh, most clients to install. But what it actually is, if you have a developer, which you do, you have, um, whatever they're called, ask them to install the, what is it called? It's FAQ schema. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Again, I could find in front of the keyboard FAQ scheme will give you the actual code to actually use, to actually use on the website and so all they need to do then is you, you provide them the questions and the answers they'll create a big block of code and then you can install that on the where are we, on the FAQ page and then you can and that will also show those FAQs in the Google search results it's what they call a, it's a rich snippet it's, it's a really good additional piece of information but then first and foremost I would actually have FAQs with a drop down on the web page and then install that schema as well. Okay. So our stories, click on that. This is this is where I think a YouTube video would be fantastic for you. I think you're such a great speaker. Um, and I think a video showcasing yourself mixed like a nice table with your hampers and a nice sort of background and just this talking about you know make it more personal you know make it a, a video that you have on YouTube that you can embed in, into this you know the, the information you've laid out here is pretty it's fine it's no problem um, but at the same time you might want to you know you know show more um, embed a video and then which will go into your personal story look humans we love video we just love video okay so it's not going to go wrong and that's something can be for your YouTube video when you get rid of this little terrible Google Plus thing that no one uses. Ugh, makes me angry. All right. Omega Digital. Yay. Awesome. Can you link to me? <laughs> jokes, jokes, jokes. Um, okay, cool. So we can have... So when you click on shop, I get 13 products, which is cool. And I go next. And I get page two. Okay. Which is sold out. Page one 
if when you start to increase the amount of products that you have, it's a really awesome idea, especially Pamper Hamper, where I have, there's actually a, a, a considerable Google, um, uh, uh, so it's got a relatively high search volume for Pamper Hampers. So what I would do is, and this will be a whole discussion in itself, there's a whole video in itself, but I would actually have categories, not just click on shop and show all, and you might actually have that in collections. Oh, you got the corporate gift hampers category and you've got individual items. Okay, so with the corporate gift hampers, you've got eight products out of the 13, and then on the other one, the individual items, you show all, three, all five. Okay, this is separate items. All right, so what I'll do, I'll follow suit. So you've got corporate gift hampers. I know pamper hamper might be, might be a, a, a category. There's also what I found, um, and sorry, this is a little bit all over the place. I'm just hoping you get value out of it. So when I go to Google and I type in luxury gift hampers and I scroll, sometimes it comes up, sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, is that people also ask section? We'll, we'll, we'll generate that in a minute. You'll see down here searches related to luxury gift hampers. This is exactly what people are searching for on Google. So you click on luxury gift hampers for her and you'll see that when you open up this particular URL, you will see it would have creative hampers, and I'm pretty sure this would be Shopify. I would say so. But do you see how many, uh, this is actually completely by surprise, but this is exactly what I was talking about. Do you see how many sort of categories it has? No, I don't think it is um, Shopify, but you can have seller hampers, chocolate hampers, cooking hampers, corporate gift hampers that you've already gotten, Father's Day. The more categories you're actually able to crown the page and fill it with products, the more Google understand exactly what you're actually selling and actually help you rank for these different keywords. So we just saw uh, gift hampers for her. So obviously that would be a category that I would want to see in your collections. So that would be corporate gift or gift hampers for her. Gift hampers for him, a category called pamper hampers. Um, and then you would display them on this category. And then when you click on uh, this URL, it will come up with those different categories. Gift hampers for her, gift hampers for him, and your corporate. Now notice too, the category for corporate gift hampers is collection slash say to businesses. Not sure why that is the way that it's named. I would chat. I know you can't remove collections because it's Shopify, but after that forward slash, if you change that to corporate gift hampers, right? If I press enter, that will 404. That should be the URL. And so the current URL that you have now, I don't know exactly how you can do this through um, Shopify, ask your developer. But you need to then, if you change the URL, you need to to what they call 301 redirect that URL to your corporate gift hampers URL that I definitely recommend you create. So everything here is done okay, you know, you got blah, 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 that's fine. But just want to show you the fact that you really want to start having more categories down the left-hand side that this website is doing, creativehampers.com.au, and you want to actually show them in your collections page. Okay, so... What I would also recommend that you do, so we'll go back to Google and put in luxury gift hamper. This is actually the first, first screen recording that I've done, so yeah, probably a bit all over the place, but anyway. Um, so this search is related to gifts for her, luxury hampers, luxury pamper hamper. That's why you need to have a category called pamper hamper. Um, Hampers with bite, chocolate hampers, edible hampers, luxury gifts. So I wouldn't recommend that you have categories for these keywords. This is just giving you ideas into, okay, what, what I can actually, what how many categories I can create. So what I recommend to do also, let's try this, get rid of gift hampers. And you can see down here, like gift hampers, Sydney, David Jones, gift hampers, luxury gift hampers for her. That's obviously a big one. So you know you're going to actually need to create that category 100%. Now I'm just trying to use Google itself before I start using third-party plugins. But you've got down here, you can actually see gift hampers for men. So I would definitely have 
um, gift hampers for men and gift hampers for her and pamper hampers. Three more categories you need to create, plus rename the corporate gift hampers. Well, that would be so far the recommendation. And eventually, it doesn't hurt to actually create Christmas gift hampers as well. So really what we want to try to find now is what categories can you create that you can add on to collections and make sure the URLs match the actual keyword as well. So what we normally use, we use there's different tools that we can use. And so this is something, this is called Ahrefs. This is a pretty cool program. So gift hampers. Now, this shows you how difficult it is probably to get onto the first page of gift hampers. It's 42 out of 100. I'll probably say it's more close to like maybe 55 out of 100. It's very difficult to rank. Now, down the bottom here, we can we can see what keywords having the same terms, what questions people are typing in around gift hampers, which again is going to be a big, big um, uh, takeaway for you today. More content on the blog, and I'm going to get to that last. So... You can see here how to make baby gift hampers, what to put in gift hampers, where to buy baby gift hampers. These these key, these sorts of topics that you should be creating seem to be a little bit counterintuitive. Why am I want to show people how to make gift hampers? But the more it gives you an opportunity to target people that are searching that, and then they can then land on your web page and see. Well, now they know who Slate With A Box is, even though you're showing people how to do what you are currently doing. It seems a little bit um, counterintuitive and sort of against sort of what you want to do, but look what I'm doing right now. I'm doing what I would do for you anyway, and I'm going to put it out there onto the whole webosphere to sort of, to sort of take um, inspiration from as well, because transparency builds authenticity, which builds credibility, all right? So this gives you ideas how to make chocolate gift hampers, how to post gift hampers, where to buy baby gift hampers, what to put in gift hampers. These are all sort of questions I would I would start creating right now on your blog. Um, we'll go back to where it was or keyword ideas. Actually, phrase match. And these give you sort of different keywords the volumes are an estimate they're not exactly 100 percent but you can see sort of different keywords what people are searching for around gift hampers gift hampers sydney melbourne adelaide christmas gift hampers gift hampers per baby gift hampers there's another category for you to create if you like um, if you accept afterpay gift hampers for men gift hampers camera so you can see really um the sorts of things that people are actually searching for and i spend a good chunk of my time researching different phrases to help clients build out more pages based on what keywords people are typing for. So there's also, let's put, if we put luxury gift hampers. So these are really not that sort of targeting what you probably want to do right now. So you might want to do gift ideas. And this is going to be a gold mine of blogging ideas and YouTube videos. So, so gift ideas will be a very difficult keyword to rank. Um, but Christmas gift ideas will be a blog article, potential, potentially another category on your website. Gift ideas for men, gift ideas for women. Mother Day gifts, wedding gift ideas, 21st birthday. And, and you see, bang, 21st. 21st birthday, that's, again, a category you can create that's very specific that's going to help you um, create more content. So you might have 21st birthday gift ideas as the keyword we're targeting, but we might just change the URL because you're selling boxes to um, this will be 21st birthday gift hampers. And then the keyword that we're trying to, to rank on that page is both the hampers and the gifts. And you might even want to actually, you know, add some items in here as well. Again, this section here should have its own category structure as well. So we can target what people are searching for. So this could actually be instead of maybe individual items, maybe gift ideas. So you might have a category called gift ideas and then put certain products that you have. You can increase and grow and scale and then dump them in into these categories. So that's something that I wanted you to sort of get an idea about. 
but you can you can and look any questions that you have any any more information you want i'll just email me shani and i will just sort of just export list and send them to you but this is a really really cool um sort of tool to help you generate blog ideas and google as well gifts ideas for her who has everything <laughs> okay so some poor guy out there or whatever is struggling to find what to give basically when she has everything which clearly she doesn't have everything but people are typing that how to make birthday gifts doctor who gifts maybe not appropriate B birthday gifts for her who has everything so you can actually create gifts for a mother who lost her son gifts for her who have everything gifts for her which has everything so you can see what people are sort of searching for that you can then go and create on the blog as well as build new categories on the website i just really want to hone in on that um, principle because that's how you're going to improve your SEO and search engine visibility when you build out and scale different categories on the website that are based on what people are searching for. I'm just I want to show you this tool, but my favorite still my favorite tool is Google itself. Google's telling you search is related too. Now what I want to generate for you is this section it came up before it went away now. Luxury gift tenders. Okay, it's not generating. So I might put where there's a keyword lawyer. This section here. Now, depending on what you write, you may generate the people also ask section. This section here for me takes away every single excuse for a business not to create, create content at the very least. There's so much content out there to, to take the content and then how you structure the, comment, uh, the content, format it, SEO optimize it, you know, outreach to different websites that might want to link to it, which then increases and grows your domain authority. It just goes on and on and on. But at the very least, businesses can be creating content based on Google's own people also ask. And it, or it can at the very least inspire you to create content. Okay? So this I just typed in where to buy gift hampers, and then you scroll down your people also ask. And then you've got, where can I put in a gift? Uh, where, I, I can't read today. What can I put in a hamper gift? Do people still buy gift baskets? What is a gourmet basket? What is a pamper hamper? Which I, what I will do on that one is a YouTube video, a five minute video of, of, of you either building a pamper hamper. You know, you, you should really be uh, in front of camera because like when I spoke, when I spoke to you, I'm like, you speak so well, so elegantly, so professional. Um, you have that sort of, you have the face for, for, for you know, look like me, like an ogre, right? So I would definitely recommend that you actually create that and you can showcase the actual content and the hampers that you're building. Um, but this particular one is the pamper hamper. So I would have a YouTube video literally, literally called, what is a pamper hamper? Then I will go to your, back to your website, click on blog. I would create, you haven't written anything since October 28th, 2019. Shani, haven't I taught you anything? So, all good. I know you, now you're really busy. So I would create a, a title and description, or title would be, what is a pamper hamper? Create your little um, uh, brief little um, bio here, oh, description about the, 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 the article. And here, this obviously image would be a, a, a pamper hamper. When you click on that, the more content you write, the better, right? But write your content, uh, talk about the pamper hampers that you create. Why is a pamper hamper different at, say, with a box versus anywhere else? And then embed your, your YouTube video. Embed it. Bang. So what's going to happen then is when someone goes to Google, Sorry, I, just because I've got the microphone right next to it. You've got multiple ways of coming up. Okay, You might not come up at all if you don't have any authority, but at least you've got that piece of content there. So you're, obviously, because you've written a blog article, it can come up in the standard search results. Okay. Also, you, your YouTube video can come up in the video section. And sometimes you'll notice if I... I'm just trying to get the video. Sometimes the videos actually show up in the Google search results. 
So that's a third way. So first way, your blog article will appear in the Google search results. Second is the actual Google videos themselves. Third is actually the videos embedded in the normal standard search results. And four, obviously, YouTube itself. So four ways. And when you embed a video into a blog article, Google understands a lot more about that video now because it's inside a blog article and it will help you rank on both the blog and uh, both Google search results as well as YouTube. And then on YouTube, when you are creating a description, make sure you include a lot of keywords, you know, include content about what the video is, include tags and make a nice title. Um, and we can discuss at length in more detail when you start doing that. But I would definitely, definitely start uh, working on that. So you can see what do you put in. I've just, this is by accident. This is just, this is the, the this is just for you because you're such a great person. So what do you put in a pamper hamper? All right, so there's another there's another one you can probably embed. So when you write in what is a pamper hamper, embed that is a subcategory. What do you put in a pamper hamper? You know, what do you put in a girly hamper? How do you make a pamper basket? How do you make a hamper basket? So you can incorporate these headings. You don't necessarily have to make new blog articles. You can incorporate this as a subheading and then put that into your main article, what is a pamper hamper? All right, so do we have any... And then if you actually click on this drop down, more load up. <laughs> okay, so it just it just keeps going. Again, for all the businesses that are, that are listening, this section takes away any excuse for any business not to write content on a blog. And if you need to start doing that because of more content, more visibility, more more branding, more often people see you, you build trust and credibility, and you can give your spin on what people are asking for. Now I've actually heard. Um, Clients and potential clients say, I don't want to write about how do I uh, clean jewelry because the way that these articles are talking about or or how do I clean jewelry at home, we don't recommend you clean jewelry at home. Okay, if you don't recommend to clean jewelry at home, have an article, why shouldn't you clean your jewelry at home? And then talk about why you shouldn't. There's never an excuse. Even if it's, even if a question is in the affirmative of a position, talk about how it's not recommended that you go down that path. And I got that in my latest blog article I put up. So, guys, that's some advice. Also on Omega Digital, while we're going through the coronavirus, this article up here sort of, um, sorry about that massive, I just love that quote so much, from John Fitzpatrick from Money to Drive. So I actually cre created this article on the blog and it actually tells you what three things you can do for your business while we're going through this crisis, okay? different other tips, and you can actually see down the bottom, I've actually embedded my YouTube video because that's the advice I like to give, um, and that's a podcast where Mariah, who's my content writer, and I, we discuss uh, how, what is SEO and how does it work in 2020, uh, and a lot more information. So that's an hour long. Uh, it's probably better broken down into my, I'm going to put it up into different sections and categories, but I definitely recommend that. So... To start off with that, that's what I recommend that you do for now. And let me know how you go. Let me know, uh, comment, email me. I'm going to publish this everywhere just because I want everyone to sort of know about you. Um, again, get, kill this Google Plus thing, get rid of it, and put up a YouTube icon. Um, if a YouTube icon doesn't exist on this sort of um, icon set, maybe ask your developer. And... Um, I can actually also perform a complete website audit for you at a later date if I have time. But hopefully that's enough information for you uh, for now because there's so much that we can talk about and discuss. Um, but I will leave it there. Thank you so much and I look forward to hearing from you.